The film begins with a series of images showing all kinds of scientific torture to children all over the world. One night, a massacre takes place in a children's ward. There are search parties deployed in the near forest, looking for a couple of kids on the run. One of them is a girl, who flees to avoid the same fate as the others in the ward. The search group manages to catch the other one, a little boy who was brought in front of Dr. Beck. She complains about the loss of the girl, but concludes that it was no easy task to catch her, given the kid's special conditions. She tells the search leader, Mr. Choi that the girl's condition is different from his, so they decide to leave the girl out, believing that she won't survive for long anyway. In the wee hours of the morning, a farmer finds the missing girl, who is dirty and in terrible condition. He and his wife have a doctor see her, and he tells them that her condition will be stable and she will recover. However, the doctor believes that the girl may be suffering from amnesia, forgetting both her name and age. The farmer's wife, upon leaving, senses how the unconscious girl still has the strength to hold her hand, beginning a bond in the process. Ten years later, the girl, now named Jia Yun, grows up with Mr. and Mrs. Ku as if they were her real parents. Jia Yun drives and does the family chores due to her parents' delicate condition, living a relatively normal life in the countryside. During the family dinner, news reports of an alleged murder of a geneticist and negative events in the livestock economy cause Mr. Ku to question whether to sell some of his cattle, much to Jia Yun's chagrin. That same night, Jia Yun suffers from a terrible headache after taking a shower, and then researches Alzheimer online to know more about her mother's condition. The next day, Jia Yun meets her friend Dong Myung Hee at the bus stop. On the road, Myung Hee tells Jia Yun about a TV contest called Birth of a Star, which offers $500,000 as the top prize, and says that the money could help her support her family's livestock and improve her mother's health. Jia Yun auditions for the contest, where she's told that although she may not sing well, at least she has intelligence and beauty to back her up. To everyone's surprise, Jia Yun gets a perfect score to participate later in the show. The Ku family and Myung Hee watch Jia Yun's audition at night, giving them compliments on her performance. Suddenly the atmosphere gets tense when on the show, Jia Yun is asked by the hosts if she has a special talent, and she replies that she can do some kind of magic, something that upsets her parents, reprimanding Jia Yun. Myung Hee tells them that they have nothing to worry about, as it will only earn her extra points on social media, but before she can continue defending her friend, the phone rings, Myung Hee answers, only for the speaker to go silent. When Myung Hee goes to sleep, Mr. and Mrs. Ku talk to Jia Yun about the dangers of exposing herself too much to the public. While her mom is worried, both her dad and Jia Yun are reassured that she won't win and will stay there with them, but with some extra money. Just before going to sleep, Jia Yun suffers another headache, detecting that there are some men in the mountains watching her family. The next day, the girls ride a train to Seoul, sharing boiled eggs that Jia Yun promptly devours. They are interrupted by the laughter of a mysterious boy sitting across, who claims to know Jia Yun, even calling her by the nickname Ms. Witch. He goes so far as to intimidate her, telling Jia Yun that there's no need to hide any secrets, speaking in English, but soon the boy realizes that Jia Yun doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. To check his suspicions, the boy almost slaps Jia Yun, but stops his hand just before impact, detecting something that leaves Jia Yun crying. After Myung he makes a fuss against him, the boy ends up leaving them, but tells Jia Yun to meet again. While switching wagons, the boy effortlessly kills a guy he accidentally bumped into, and throws the corpse off the train. Even though the girls are late for the live program, Jia Yun ends up giving an excellent performance, so much that she manages to advance to the quarterfinals. As the program airs, Dr. Beck and Mr. Choi recognize Jia Yun on TV, marveling at how the missing girl managed to survive in the end. After leaving the competition, Jia Yun suffers another headache that forces her to go to the bathroom to calm down. In a flashback during a checkup at the neurologist, the doctor tells Jia Yun that she needs an expensive surgery, and that her life is a race against time. When Jia Yun asks how long she has left, the doctor tells her one to three months, and that a marrow transplant from her birth parents is the only way to make it effective. Back in the present, Myung Hee finds Jia Yun, and tells her that they must return to the train. They try to take a cab, but instead, a car parks in front of them, with bad-looking guys surrounding them. They claim to know Jia Yun, but thanks to some kids passing by, the girls manage to distract the men and get into a cab. On their way back home, Myung Hee leaves Jia Yun alone for a moment at the bus stop, and in front of her parks the same mysterious boy from the train, who starts talking in both Korean and English about the men from before to see if Jia Yun understands him, but she's speechless. The boy says goodbye, telling Jia Yun that she'd better go home. After the boy leaves, Jia Yun runs off looking for a cab and tells Myung Hee to ask his dad to come to his house to make sure his parents are okay, since he's with the police. Officer Do does this, and intercepts the van of the mysterious boy, who is accompanied by some henchmen. Upon arrival, the girls don't find Officer Do and Jia Yun detects danger inside the house, only to find her parents and the officers playing in the living room, with no sign of the mystery boy. As they say goodbye, Officer Do asks Jia Yun if she knows the guys from before, commenting that they are actually Americans. Jia Hoon tells him that she doesn't, and that she might have been mistaken for someone else. 
In the next scene, a man goes to a rural resort with his driver. When he arrives, he finds the dead bodies of his family in the greenhouse, and the mysterious guys being the killers. Apparently, they were supposed to kill the man, but not happy with that, they proceeded to kill his entire family. The driver goes to the man's rescue with a gun, but he's also intercepted by the mysterious boy, who injured him off-screen. The helpless driver tries to defend himself, but the boy uses some sort of telekinesis to trigger the gun in front of him, and causing the driver to shoot himself against his will. The group set the place on fire and drives off. The next day, Dr. Beek reads in the news how a gene researcher died with her family in a house fire. She discusses with Mr. Choi about the girl's situation and tells him not to worry for her, even though he wants to do something about it. The woman also asks Mr. Choi about his condition, and he reveals that under his gloved hand there's black, lumpy skin. Another of the gene researchers asks Mr. Choi to kill the girl, but to bring her brain to study her special condition. Meanwhile, Myung Hee discusses the possibility of a fan club for Ja Yoon and her future stardom over family dinner, but everything is interrupted when Mrs. Koo wonders why she and her husband are eating together with a couple of strangers, wanting to know where their daughter had gotten to. Ja Yoon tries to calm her down, but it is shown how her mother's condition has worsened to the point of not recognizing her. Before going to sleep, her mother reveals that she found evidence about Ja Yoon searching for her biological parents. Already sleeping, Ja Yoon gets a new headache, not realizing that her house has been broken into. When she realizes this and goes to get her parents up, a gun is pointed at her head, finding that her house is full of mercenaries holding Myung Hee hostage. They're the same guys who had offered them a ride to the train before, and their leader reveals that this isn't the first time he and Ja Yoon have met, and how she was the cause of his multiple scars. Ja Yoon tells him that he's mistaking her for someone else, and just as they slightly cut Myung Hee neck, Ja Yoon manages to wriggle free of her shooter, and uses his gun to kill all the mercenaries there. Now she takes on the leader on her own, defeating him easily. Ja Yoon kills the man and feels herself awakening from a trance, only to find a fearful Myung Hee by her side. The mysterious boy appears on the scene, and reveals that his group is also in the house. He congratulates Ja Yoon, thinking that her memories finally came back. He then asks to a scared Myung Hee if she thinks her friend is weird, since she has an above average level of intelligence despite never studying, in addition to her innate gifts in singing and dancing, and learning a language just by hearing it once. Ja Yoon doesn't really know what the young man is talking about, so he ends up believing her and asks her to accompany them to recover her memories. Despite her friend's advice not to go, Ja Yoon agrees to go, under the threat that if she doesn't, they'll kill everyone she knows. During their car ride, the mysterious boy reveals that having come to the Koo farm as a child was no coincidence, but that Ja Yoon had selected them because they were more vulnerable to having a kid after they had lost their son and grandson. They take Ja Yoon to an abandoned complex, the one that used to house her and the other special children. Ja Yoon is placed in a glowing experimentation room, where she hears Dr. Beek's voice. Dr. Beek believes Ja Yoon's alibi of amnesia due the brutal damage during the night she escaped, and that if she still had her memories, she wouldn't have exposed herself so easily on TV. Ja Yoon is injected with a substance that triggers her past memories. Now she remembers all the cruel experiments years ago. Dr. Beek claims to be the best brain specialist in the world, and to be the one who created Ja Yoon, giving superhuman abilities to the girl. Her plan at the time was to train a series of gifted children as weapons, but there was a change of plans when she learned of the side effects the children went through when they were transplanted with modified physical genes. The children began to become aggressive, and were harder to contain. Ja Yoon was the closest specimen to perfection, but fearing that she was going to get out of control, HQ wanted her and other children erased, ending Dr. Beek's research. Despite refusing, she ended up accepting it, but she underestimated Ja Yoon's abilities that night, so the girl escaped far away. They never believed that a weapon like Ja Yoon could have a normal life, so they left her for dead, at least until she appeared on the TV show and showed off her telekinetic ability. Dr. Beek tells Ja Yoon that because of her condition, the migraines are getting worse, and that she will die of a hemorrhage at any moment. Ja Yoon is in agony, and they end up injecting her with a second dose that will unlock her 100%, though it will only last for a month. The woman says that from now on, Ja Yoon will need one dose of the substance per month in order to survive. The situation takes a turn when Ja Yoon reveals that her true plan was to have that substance in order to be free from her pain, something the mysterious boy notices, so he and his henchmen decide to go to the scene. Now Ja Yoon remembers everything, managing to outwit the communication equipment, killing her guard and getting hold of a weapon. Dr. Beek releases some gas in the room before it's too late, but Ja Yoon manages to hit an exit in the ceiling vents. She gets through to the next room, and points toward the doctor. Ja Yoon confesses that this was her plan all along, to go unnoticed and then find the doctor and her criminal group, and have them give her the cure for her illness, a plan she has kept secret for years. Ja Yoon assures that she will kill everyone who hurt her in the past and shoots the doctor in the knee, asking where the rest of the cure is. Mr. Choi's group arrives at the building and has a confrontation with the boy's henchman, but loses in the process. The only one left standing is Mr. Choi himself, 
revealing that he is the same one who would trap the kid during the night Jiayun escaped, this kid being the mysterious boy. In the commotion, the boy makes his way to where Jiayun is, attacking upon finding her. They both trash talk each other about the night they ran away, and before he can do anything, Jiayun charges at the boy, showing her clear superiority. The two have an intense fight, receiving sharp impacts, but with no significant injuries. Jiayun taunts the boy by subduing him several times, and even though he hurts her, she doesn't even flinch. Jiayun ends up throwing the boy through the wall into the control room. She grabs her gun and reshoots the doctor, who was trying to escape across the hall. The boy takes another gun and shoots at Jiayun. They both use their telekinetic abilities, but Jiayun is still in the lead. Even a clear cut through her hand can't stop Jiayun, who has a super fast regenerative system. Just before taking out the boy, Jiayun is shot in the back. It was Mr. Choi, who also shoots one of the mysterious young man's colleagues in the head just before she kills the doctor. Dr. Beak thanks Mr. Choi for saving her, but before she can say something else, Mr. Choi kills her. The boy's colleague manages to get to her feet, and lunges at Mr. Choi. The two engage in a rather close fight, but Choi manages to win, only to realize that he has Jia Yun on his tail. He tries to take her on, but he's no match for the perfect specimen, who takes him out completely. Jia Yun has one last conversation with the boy before killing him, but he shows her the last dose of the cure. He extorts Jia Yun by telling her where the rest of it is, but this is just a distraction for his colleague to attack her from behind. However, Jia Yun blocks and blows up her face. Even though the boy is behind her, pointing a gun at her, Jia Yun is powerful enough to freeze him. She stabs him several times, and before she shoots, the boy makes her question whether it's all worth it, since at the end of the day, their condition doesn't allow them to live for long, and Jia Yun can't go back to the life she used to have before. She tells him that she doesn't care and will continue to live as Jia Yun. She asks again where the other cure doses are, but the boy scoffs and refuses to talk. Everything goes dark and a gunshot rings out. Jia Yun manages to find the other doses in the building, abandoning it on her own as she did years before. Watching her flee, the facility is seen to explode, eliminating all evidence. Jia Yun returns to the farm, which is surrounded with patrols, so she just decides to run away. The next scene shows Mr. Ku next to his unconscious wife in the hospital, sensing the arrival of his daughter. Jia Yun offers Mr. Ku the case with the cure, telling him to use it on his wife for eight months so her condition will stop worsening. When Mr. Ku asks Jia Yun if she will need the cure, she says a couple of doses will be fine. Before leaving, Mr. Ku explains to Jia Yun that some of their livestock died when she appeared in their lives, so he feared that they were raising a witch. He confesses that he had regretted adopting her, but the factor that changed that was his wife, convincing him to raise Jia Yun together, and make her a lovely child. It all ends with Hyun Mi in the hospital, watching from the distance as her friend walks away alone. Three months later, at a seaside house, Jia Yun appears in front of a woman in a wheelchair, showing her a briefcase full of doses of the cure. However, Jia Yun says she needs something more permanent, so she asked for her help. The woman calls someone else in the room, and Jia Yun tells this new guest, a girl with scars on her face, that if she lays a finger on her, she will kill her. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.